to do an experiment here for you, and for that I have to take off this tie. You know, we cannot afford in this university uh, periodic tables here, so I always carry the periodic table with me. You see? I have it right here. Okay, now, look at this minus sign, and I'm going to show you a trick. Look at that minus sign there. So here I have, here I have a tube. This, this actually, this experiment fascinates me every time I do it. I teach this electricity magnetism for 25 years, and it fasc fascinates me every time. So Pat, I need you to help me here. Do you want to be on TV? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Experience, okay. but I'll be glad to try. Okay, hold on to this. This is a piece of aluminum, okay? It's a piece of aluminum, okay? So please hold on to this piece of aluminum. And I see one of my students, uh, Stephanie, do you want to be on TV? She's not, she didn't know she's exposed to this. She came to this talk very nicely, and now I, I put her on TV. What the hell? Okay, it's Stephanie. Stephanie, you just put your hands under this, and Pat is going to throw that piece of aluminum. Now make sure that you grab it, okay, that it falls down. Now. Okay, so put the piece of aluminum there, and let it drop. Drop it into the holder. Falls out immediately. Okay, do it again. Do it again, just so people get convinced that there is nothing inside there. Grab it, okay? Okay? Good, Pat. Very good. Okay, now, all I'm going to do now is I take, I take this piece of aluminum and take a piece of iron. That is a piece of iron. Actually, it's not iron. It's something more complicated, but it's a magnet. And put the magnet in there, and notice the magic. You dropped it in there, and it's not coming out, the damn thing. It's somewhere in there. No, no, just put your hand because it's, there it came out. You see, put it in again, drop it in again. Now, it takes a very long time, very, very long time to come out. Notice that. Every time I do this experiment, it fascinates me. It takes forever to take out. There it is. What is that? What that thing is, is this minus sign. Thank you, thank you very much. I don't have any apples or anything to give you. What that thing is this minus sign. See, I showed you the hat. You guys thought that I was joking. There is that minus sign there. That's the minus sign. So I, I promise that I'm going to show differential equations. So I, I did do that also, okay, during this talk. Okay, now, let me just tell you what is the magic about here now. Because the I forgot to tell you something about the electrons. The electrons, in addition to having a charge, a negative charge, they have a spin. Okay? And that makes them even more interesting because of the following. Because you can ask the following question here. What happens if electrons with a spin, and that gives rise to all the magnetism that there is, go through a material? And look, the electrons with a charge, never forget the charge, but the ones with the spin, they go through the material, if, and if they go for a quite a ways, they forget their spin. And so that's a problem, because if you want to ask the kind of questions we asked about the charge, now with the spin we have a problem. So now I have to go back and tell you about length scales. So let me just tell you a little bit about length scales. Here it is, a device, okay? That's a device. You see there is small little integrated circuits here, and there is defects on this thing, and all kinds of things, okay? But this device is seen from the sky. This device is Barcelona, okay? You see, if you look at it at the length scale, which is far away, things look very small. So what you have to do in order to understand the behavior of things, you have to compare them with the length scale, okay? For instance, here is a length scale of some vortices. This was when I went diving in Crete. See? There is a length scale. There is, I am the length scale here. And there it is, these vortices. Things that spiral there. These are about the size of my head. Okay? Now, what I will tell you is about length, length scales in solid state physics, which are all tiny. Magnetic length scales are very, very small. They are like nanometers. Superconducting length scale, catalysis length scale, all these length scales are very, very, very small. They're tiny. Now, what does that mean, a nanometer? Well, that's very difficult to figure out. How do I give you a feeling for a nanometer? So, actually, we discussed this. And you see, when things are smaller than a length scale, then they become, uh, they change their properties eno enormously. Okay? So, a nanometer or a nano length scale is 10 to the minus 9. Now, that means pretty much nothing to anybody. So it means 0 0.000, I don't know how many zeros, inches. So that doesn't mean much. Okay? So what I do is, you see, we physicists usually try to compare things with things. So what is a nano length scale? What would be a nano length scale? Imagine that you want to go from here to the sun. If you want to go from here to the sun, it takes a long time. Right? For some of you, it's even longer than Los Angeles. It's, in fact, even farther than Australia. It's really far. 
Here I have, you see, uh, we physicists always carry things with us. So here I have a nano distance to the sun. That's a nano distance to the sun. And you know, things, strange things happen. If you take an object like this one, which is bigger than this nanoscale, you know, it looks like an object, like an ordinary object, okay? You take another object, it's another object, it's still bigger than this nano length scale, it still looks like that. Like the same way. This is my payoff, incidentally, they're giving me these balls, okay? Now here I have an object which is smaller than my nano length scale. See, it's smaller than the nano length scale. Look what happens if I bounce it. Can you see what happens if I bounce it? Huh? It changes its properties. Okay? That's what happens. When you change something and it becomes smaller than a certain length scale, its properties completely change. Okay? Now, another way to think about it is the following. Is, uh, this is uh, my payoff for... Imagine the national, uh, the national deficit. It's huge, right? It's like trillion. If you go to, the, to Times Square, you see all these numbers flashing. There's trillions of dollars. I have a nano de de deficit. Okay? The chancellor gave me this one. There's a nano national deficit, you see? Can pay off with this one, but that's what it is. So that's how small are these things. And that's why we can pack many of them together. Okay? So now we understand how we're making these nano things. So what we can make is always compare things compared to this length scale. And so we make things smaller, so they're bigger than this length scale. They're called, the, the one says it's three-dimensional. If some uh, size of it is smaller than some length scale, it's called two-dimensional. And if something is very small, it can be even zero-dimensional, if it's smaller than any length scales. Okay, so here are the nanostructures. They look like this, you see? An atom looks very tiny. A bulk material is huge, right? It's of the size of this building. A nanostructure is something tiny, but it's not completely an atom. But the properties of it are completely different. And that's what allows us to use these properties for something. Now, when I mean use these properties, I don't mean make something useful with it. I mean just have fun. Okay? Now, why is this difficult? Now, the reason that this is difficult is the, is the following is. When the structures are very, very small, they don't behave like you think you behave. Think about this table here. Think about this piece of aluminum or this table. The atoms there look like they're sitting there, and they're sitting very solid. So I'm going to show you a movie how the atoms actually look at room temperature, a piece of copper. How does it look like? So there it is, a movie of a piece of, uh, of, a piece of copper at room temperature. Okay? This is a calculation. Now, this is not atoms. We're not actually seeing the atoms. This is a calculation. And there it is. Look at that. That's how the atoms look on the surface of copper. So it's not like you put an atom there. Here we're putting atoms there. Okay? So notice here the things are coming down, but they don't sit there. They move around. Because even at room temperature, the surfaces are extraordinarily mobile. And because of that, I need to be here and do this. It's not so trivial to do it. It's not so obvious to do it. It's difficult to do it. Okay? And so notice that as, the, as for instance, follow, try to follow one of those balls there, and when it comes down, it starts moving around, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm throwing these balls one by one, and notice how, the, how, how much mobility there is there. So it's not like these balls are sitting there and not doing anything. That's why these things are difficult to do. Okay, so now, but once I think about this, I can invent all kinds of things, you know, I can... Think about where the future of this is going to go. So I can think of making up a row of atoms, and people have done that. We can think about putting them down and making arrays, two-dimensional arrays, and people have done that. We can think even about three-dimensional arrays, people which haven't done. Okay, but we can think of doing that kind of things, and we can think of constructing these artificial materials. The difficulty is, remember, these atoms are very mobile, and they don't always do what you want them to do. They do whatever the hell they want to do. Okay? But you see... This is very intelligent and very bright, but this thing has been figured out already a long time ago by some bacteria. So there is a bacteria, this is called a magnetotactic bacteria. And these bacteria have these tiny little iron pieces in them. They are tiny little compasses that are smaller than the length scale of the magnetism. So each one of them is like a little magnet. And these bacteria figured out the following. They, uh, so see, they are very tiny. There it is, a magnetotactic bacteria. There it is, the atoms. There is only 3 million atoms in there. Tiny little thing, 100 nanometers. And these bacteria figured out the following. They figured out if they use this, they can navigate in the Earth's magnetic field. They know where the food is. They know that they have...